right. Yeah. yeah. You know, Kelly, not to leave you out in this conversation of uh, you know these, these uh, film festivals that actually reach out to the community, etc. Mm -hmm. One might think you're, you're showing genre films, and, and mm -hmm. that doesn't serve a purpose beyond being you know, highly entertaining, a little squeamish, and maybe, you know, let, let you, let you, you know, get scared for a moment or two. Yet, I think your festival does serve a purpose for filmmakers that might go um, ignored. Um, I don't want to put yeah. words in your mouth, but that's my, that's my take on well, it. Well, I've always looked at the festival as an emerging film festival, in the sense that this, genre films is a great way, because the great thing about genre films is they have a built-in audience. We don't have to fight the way dramas and comedies and other kinds of films have to fight to get an audience, we do have somewhat of a bit, bit of a built-in audience that people will take a chance on, because uh, let's face it, most people don't take a chance on indie cinema, but it, they will take a little bit more of a chance when it comes to horror films. Mm -hmm. So it's a great gateway for filmmakers that we've seen a lot of filmmakers that have played our festivals, that have moved on into other things that are outside of genre films or they've moved into into bigger realms of, of, of filmmaking, you know, playing uh, the director on Below Her Mouth played Tiff this year, and she she played at uh, at Bits a couple of years ago, yeah. and uh, and so those kinds of things. That's so that's kind of it too. Where I think uh, that's where we kind of serve the community. We have definitely filmmakers that have been making films for 12, 15 years, but we also have a lot of brand new filmmakers as well. And it's not to say that, you know, the imaginative, that, that these films can't be genre films as well. Yeah, so for us, we show a tremendous amount of diversity in our programming. Um, I think there's a misconception uh, about Indigenous people that we're not really diverse within ourselves. Mm. I mean, first of all, we're showing films from all over the world. And even within this country, there's a tremendous amount of diversity. But in terms of genre or or form, um, yeah, there's a real range of, of methodology, of form, of uh, content, subject, everything. We show documentaries, uh, narrative, um, experimental. Uh, we also um, showcase a lot of uh, new media or digital media art, so um, like interactive works, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality works. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different stuff to take in and we also do um, like installation based uh, work in galleries, mm -hmm. so there's an art crawl that's part of it, so yes, it's very there's a lot to take in. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's mm -hmm. not just it's not just that one period of time. You you can extend that over a year too in many ways, right? Different mm -hmm. festivals, different ideas. Um, your your festival might be a little harder when di in uh, diversity as far as genres go. Uh, you're specific on, on on your goals and your uh, what you want to get out of the festival and what do you want to bring into it too? Yes, well being an environmental film festival uh, we tend to uh, have mostly documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, with our short program we're able to expand out and have a bit more um, diversity in terms of um, genre. We'll have uh, a lot of animation films or sometimes more interpretive dance films, experimental, but uh, traditionally uh, not that we're against doing drama but that's uh, generally what we uh, we show uh, we're, you know, our subject matter is diverse, and sometimes we're dealing with wildlife. Sometimes we're dealing with activism. Sometimes we're dealing with farming. Seeds is a very big issue. Water issues are big yeah. issues. But, but then also these sto these stories. I'm just thinking that like, I'm thinking Silkwood, although that's an American film, and, and maybe nobody here remembers it. But uh, there are films, dramatic films, that are um, completely environmental issued. You know, issued films and, and you know is there room is there, is there thought with your festival to start bringing those in well I, I particularly would love to have more drama I mean, sometimes it depends uh, we don't do all Toronto premieres but often those films you know uh, the bigger dramatic films they'll go to TIFF and then then they're off and running in a release um, so they, they try and get to release fairly quickly the yeah. dramatic films they don't have as uh, long a festival run or a community uh, community outreach, community impacts. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I would personally love to have more drama, and once in a while we, we bring one in. But uh, but generally, it's it's documentaries with us. Yeah, and people love them. So yeah, and obviously, yeah. Hot Dogs has proven that documentaries uh, do do work. Mm -hmm. um, and so, that I, 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 Anya, uh, these films also diverse genre films as well. I mean, we've got a whole lot of imaginations uh, of people putting uh, their work into your festival, uh, showing their community in different ways, so I imagine there's a lot of diversity there. 
Absolutely. We show fiction, we show documentary, short films, feature lengths, experimental films. We're, we've also been doing VR. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are so many different ways in which one can explore um, you know, the broad theme of life in cities. And cities itself is such a, you know, there's so much happening here. Did you grow up in the city? Uh, yeah, I did. And what about Regent Park? Uh, I spend a lot of my time in Regent Park, okay. but it's not where I go home, yeah. Is everybody here from uh, from the city? Uh, I mean, from you're you're elsewhere. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so you moved in here to. So it, let's talk about TIFF because it came up in conversation, and I open this up to everybody. Yeah. I mean, TIFF has been great for our city. Is it great for other festivals? <laughs> Go ahead, Ariel. You look like you're. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's um, it depends. I think on where your festival is situated in the calendar year. Mm -hmm. um, in comparison to TIFF. So for us, um, our festival is always in October. It's always the week after the Thanksgiving long weekend. So um, often we'll just miss um, uh, premieres and stuff like that. But um, often we find that um, the indigenous work that used to premiere with us will often now premiere at TIFF and then come to us afterwards. But that's all right. Um, and I know that the filmmakers often have a very different experience at our festival than they do at TIFF or, or other more mainstream festivals. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, there's benefits to it uh, for sure. Um, I mean, the light box, that's where we hold, that's our, that's our main venue. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's really great. <laughs> we have access to, to that. You know, I remember a time when we I used to go on Bloor Street, uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, yeah. Jewish YMCA, JCC. Yeah. JCC yeah. That no, we need multiple cinemas now. Because that was just one screen then? Oh, yeah, it was just one screen, yeah. So we uh. need, like, a minimum of two. Like, yeah, we have overlapping programming. Wow. That tends to happen, yeah. So it's grown a lot since mm -hmm. the... Since Since I saw the, it then? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we still are, do our openings though at the Bloor because we need a bigger capacity um, theater. The hot dog cinema. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So yeah, I still call it the Bloor. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, TIFF is great, uh, but it definitely can. I mean, we 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 sort of do a lot of things around TIFF. So it's you know, should we put this press release out announcing our opening and closing night film? What's the point? Um, TIFFs going on, should we do it before or after TIFF? So there's a lot of that sort of stuff going on for sure. What about mm -hmm. media coverage? Is it, is it um, eaten up by the time it gets to you? You do have to negotiate around TIFF for sure. You know, when you're, same thing when you're doing your press releases, mm -hmm. often uh, we'll announce our, our, we're a fall festival as well, so we'll announce after TIFF because it's really the center of the world at that time. Yeah. But but I do think it does create uh, an excitement in this city for film and a passion for film that that uh, it's just so exciting. I remember the first time I was walking down King Street and I saw people camping out mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. to get tickets and I thought mm -hmm. this is not a Rolling Stones concert. I thought this <laughs> is just great to see people. For, for TIFF? Yeah. Yeah, well, let's hope yeah. they left their campsite as clean as they did yes. when they found it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was an little environmental yeah. joke. Um, yes, now, we, how, do you, how about you? Because uh, the genre filmmaking, there, there is, is there an aspect, like uh, you're, you're for fighting against uh, Midnight Madness, maybe. Mm. You're not showing the same type of films. I think your films are very specific, mm. first of all, being really independent and Canadian. But at the same time, I mean, what kind of miscalculations would filmmakers have thinking that any of your festivals mm -hmm. would be second to TIFF? You know, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a it's a it's a strange. And I have a with bits we have a we have a even a stranger situation where we also have a very also another very large genre festival, Toronto After Dark, which is so we have TIFF in September, then we have After Dark in October, and then we're in November. Mm -hmm. So we're really kind of, and so we're all kind of, the, the good part is, is that we're actually all friends and we get along very well and we, we actually do a lot of great cross promotion with each other. But it is a kind of a tricky situation because we, uh, we play nothing but premieres at our festival, even the short films, or at least it has to be either a Toronto Canadian or world premiere. That, so, that, that, sorry, mm -hmm. that's pretty gutsy yeah. because TIFF is doing that, mm -hmm. and and so you're you're playing that same card that TIFF mm -hmm. did. Well, the thing is, is we don't want to repeat stuff, we, and, and it has a lot to do with the audience. You know, when there is, if we're just repeating stuff that 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 they're showing, that because there's a lot of the same people that are going to those 
both the Midnight Madness program and yeah. After Dark, and we just simply just don't want to have to like, oh, I've already seen that already, I've already seen that already. Because we even have that already. I mean, films will go play Fantasia, and then we'll play here, and they'll say, oh, I've already saw Fantasia. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that'll even, that will even happen in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, TIFF um, is also a lot less accessible to mm -hmm. many, many people. Right. Um, like, your film festival's mm -hmm. free, Ours, our tickets are five to eight dollars. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's, there'll be people that will wait yeah. because they can't afford that. Mm -hmm. I know, in some ways, I mean, the comparison, our mandate is just so completely different um, that, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't, it, it, it's hard to compare sometimes because we've shown, we've shown films that TIFF would show uh, and the audiences that we're bringing in would never have been able to go to TIFF to see mm -hmm. it. Um, uh, or, you know, if you did go to TIFF, to see it, you would come here and watch it again and have a completely different experience because mm -hmm. the way it's framed mm -hmm. and who we bring in and the conversations we have are just completely different. Who do you bring in? Um, so uh, some of the focus in our talkbacks is, you know, we'll have the filmmakers and we'll have the, um, uh, the actors, the subject or whatever, but we also um, bring in community members who are doing similar work or know about that experience and can kind of tie back what's happening on screen to what's happening in Toronto or in Regent Park. Mm -hmm. So that connects the audience to what's actually happening directly around them. See, that's really interesting to me because not only is your festival then introducing film and cinema um, uh, as a source of entertainment and being part of a festival to, pe to a certain community that may otherwise not have that experience, but you're also linking almost, and I, the, the word educational is, is, is something we should never use when we're talking about. Yeah, I so think it's about starting conversations. Oh, uh, that's and, the word, And yes. it's about connecting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people, pe people have complained to me if we get too educational. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. I, because it's kind of boring. Yeah. Um, but you want to have fun and you want to connect and you want to be challenged and stimulated. And so that's what we go for. You know, what, what kind of films, are, like, how do they hear about your festival? How do the filmmakers, like, how do you find your films? Do they find you? Well, we do a submission process, but we also do, um, we also solicit for films that we hear about. Mark Glassman is our senior programmer, so he's, he's quite um, a Toronto institution yes, in the is. arts scene. Uh, so, you know, we're looking for... Uh, what the films are about, but we're also looking for the highest quality film so that when people come to the film festival, they say, well, that was, not only was it really interesting and I learned a lot, but it was just a great film. And, uh, and our audiences are kind of mixed. We do have a film audience, but we also bring in an audience that don't traditionally see film. So it's, we kind of have both that. And a lot of people for us are coming as well for the discussion. It's a big part of what we do uh, after every film. You know, of course, we're all trying to get as many filmmakers to our festivals as possible. So we either have the filmmaker there or there via Skype and we have a Q&A and a discussion. And many of our films uh, will have panels afterwards. Um, so we're, we're having it, you know, sometimes the films try and keep them upbeat if we can, but sometimes they're revealing, you know, well, cr crisis situations. And, and so we, we don't want people to walk out of the theater feeling depressed. We want them to feel like we've had a, a talk and what are the things that people can do about it? Where can they go next? So that people are feeling engaged and active. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so that's a big part of what we do. There would be, a, a, I think, a threat maybe, not a threat, that's a, a, a fear, perhaps, that a, a, a planet and focus film festival, an environmental film festival, might be too earnest for some. And yet, as you said, I've seen a lot of the, your films, and uh, entertained is, is, I don't think, is an inappropriate word to use uh, for some of the films I've seen. Certainly uh, eye-opening, um, but also they're, hu they're human stories, they're, uh, they connect in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we, we, you know, we do have issue-driven films, but again, uh, an excellent quality film is the main point for us. So, you know, you really, if you, if you came out of the, the theater thinking, well, I really liked what it was about, but it was a terrible film, we, yeah. we, we just really avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the, the, yeah, the, the process of judging a film. Uh, I, uh, Kelly, can you speak to that? In, in, in regards to like... But, but accepting the film into your festival. Well, I mean, you know, we have a really great programming team and we're always searching for films all through all through the year. And I was just texting my programmers just before the show started. We we're just talking about different films that we try and source. So we have 
two of my senior programmers goes to Fantasia every year and they'll talk to filmmakers and just get the word out and and then we also find too it's interesting that we notice that we'll see the credits of people that have played our festival and then someone who might have been like might have worked on that film and they you find out that they're friends with somebody else that they told them to and then now they're going to submit it so we notice that you know when we've played uh, like a film like Bloody Knuckles that won Best Picture one year suddenly you have all these films from Vancouver that that submit the following year, and that that seems to be how we get the word out a lot for for different films that we got. Yeah, as as the youngest fi film festival on this panel, uh, where do you see yourself growing and going with this? Well, I mean, I think the one thing that you'll see the common thing there is is it is the festivals are a year round thing. It's not it, it, it isn't really just you just put it on for a couple of days and that's it. I mean, we've seen this, and you can kind of see with this with the larger stuff. I mean, this is why. TIFF has the light box, they're, they're year-round. Hot Dogs have their own theater now, and they're doing that. And so we see year-round stuff going around with all these other festivals, and we're trying to do that as well. We're, we have a TV show, we have a podcast show that we're launching soon. Uh, we do a big, we do a lot of, we go a lot of the uh, comic book conventions mm -hmm. and do like that, and we have panels there. We go to, we have a big presence at Niagara Falls Comic Con, and we have screenings there. So that's kind of like a secondary festival that we, of do a repeat stuff that we do that every June now. So I think that's kind of where we're looking at growing is just is making it much more of a, of a year, year round enterprise. What, what about an outreach program like that, taking a Regent Park Film Festival and, and taking it outside? Uh, how, do you, how do you do that or do you do that? Um, the Regent Park Film Festival has grown a lot in the last five years. I mean, our audiences have grown like three hundred percent. It's been wow. It's been very dramatic. Yeah. We've been we've been doing year-round screenings and workshops and all that stuff. And the idea of bringing the Regent Park Film Festival to another community does come up. But the thing is that so much of our work is built on relationships here and with other community groups outside. And, and that's how you know, we're able to program things that are relevant, that people care about. That's how we're able to get the right people in the room. To simply take a festival somewhere else and put it on wouldn't be the same thing. So um, I think there need to be more festivals like the Regent Park Film Festival, like Imaginative, like all of our festivals here, you know, festivals that are accessible. Um, but uh, uh, I think you know th they have to start, and um, and and we would love to support that. Yeah, place. but not even just like holding a region film film festival like in Parkdale. That probably wouldn't make too much sense. But going out, taking the region park film festival out of the community and saying, look at look what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Like, there, yeah, how how do you go out and and, and spread the word about Imaginative mm -hmm. or any of your festivals? Um, so we do a lot of programming nationally as well.